GP is like tweaking stuff. It's kind of funny when ADs will ask me, you're ready? I didn't know you're ready, you're still lighting. I was like, we'll light all day long. Like we'll tweak this thing until the cows come home unless you tell us like you're ready. Then we'll wrap it up quickly and, and, and do it. But otherwise we just, <laughs> we just make it better, you know. Between Helvetica, a Muppets movie, Borat, Cameron Space. It's just like totally all over the map. I made a decision to really take the jobs that really interested me because they're all different muscles and they really inform each other. In documentaries, it's the solitary uh, pursuit of the light and the moment, and you always have to be one step ahead and anticipate what, what is going to happen and really put yourself in the subject's shoes and empathize and try to get those moments without being too invasive and really be a fly on the wall. And then on a feature or a commercial, uh, it's, it's like a military campaign. You're prepping as well as you can, and then you go in and try to execute that plan as best as you can. So it, it's completely different, and you're managing time and people and equipment and schedules and all that. All right. Yeah, let's shoot this. I love films that are totally different method. I love designing the, the method for getting done what you need to do. And Borat was very unique in that respect because we really needed to completely rethink how a film is done because the actors or the subjects were never aware that we were actually doing what we were doing. And you pretty much had one take of the whole thing. It was like 10% cinematography, 90% juvenile delinquent. <laughs> it was like it was like a completely different skill set. One of my favorite things that I've done recently is this video for OK Go, which was all about figuring out how the physics of something is going to work and what's going to work and what's not. That was a major challenge and if we got it wrong it would be very bad because it was a lot of setup and basically one day of shooting and about a month and a half of prep. <laughs> so that day had to go off well. I do own a obscene amount of gear. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. It's almost embarrassing about a two or three tons worth of grip and electric gear, HMIs, Kinos, and LEDs, and tungsten. And then I own uh, four cameras. Sorry, five cameras. <laughs> I rent out my gear because I have too much of it. I make sure not to purchase equipment because I've fallen in love with it. That is not a good reason to buy gear. Not a good reason to buy gear. <laughs> the idea of Kit Split excited me a lot. The network of people who were rent from each other was so kind of loose and casual and not comprehensive in any way. And the idea of having this one place where you can find everybody who has that kind of camera, that kind of thing. And so if somebody contacts me and they want to rent it, I'm all for it. It should be utilized. There's tons of things that are challenging in cinematography. It's a very frustrating environment sometimes, especially if you're a little bit out of your depth. And I'll, and I'll watch people get upset or a little under the collar, a little defensive on set. And, and it seems often it's because they're a little bit out of their depth. Um, and we're all a little bit out of our depth at times. And that's good, right? So that's what makes us better. That's what challenges us. You could spend your life trying to master camera work, you could spend your life trying to master lighting, you could spend your life trying to master crew politics. There's just kind of no end to how much you can work on them. So that's kind of great because you never become complacent. It can always get better. 